Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Justin Carvin of Tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews and DC Blades. I first met Justin when he reached out as a listener and generously shared some of his amazing collection with me, exposing me to some of my current favorite custom fixed blade makers. He's a longtime knife collector. He's a gear reviewer on YouTube. And recently, he's been making his knife designs a reality, thanks to a fruitful partnership with a knife maker and CAD expert. Justin and DC Blades recently saw great success with their unlikely hit, The Scythe Flipper, an unabashed self-defense masterpiece of the folding Pical persuasion. But that was just the start for Justin's new venture. We'll find out what's in the offing for the company and how DC Blades came to be. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the show. That's a great way to help if you like the show. Also, you can then download it to your favorite podcast app. And if you want to help support the show and find out what you get in return, go on over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Justin, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Oh man, it's a pleasure. I want to, uh, I want to congratulate you on your uh, success, your and DC Blade success with the scythe. And and like I said up front, it was, it was unexpected. Tell me yeah. a little bit about that, uh, where that yeah. came from. Yeah, basically, um, you know, I had no plans to start a knife company. You know. I've been in the knife business to some degree for the better part of 30 years now. You know, my pops was actually, um, uh, he was a dealer. He did like Spyderco, Benchmade, Boker. He had a lot of different stuff in his shop, but uh, he had an army supply shop back in the day. And, you know, that was something we sold behind the counter and stuff like that. And it kind of became an obsession for me, like at a really young age. But uh wasn't until the past couple of years that... Uh, I've really started kind of exploring, you know, some of the sketches that I've made over the years. And honestly, uh, it just felt like the right time to, to try and uh, put some of this together. You know, I just kind of had a bunch piling up. And um, I mean, I've been sketching for about 15 years now on and off, something like that. So, I mean, I figured, you know, I might as well do something with it. Okay, I got to say, uh, and I think I speak for my brother when I say this as well, but I mean, it sounds like you lived the dream as a as a boy and a young yeah. man growing up in an yeah. Army Navy surplus supply store. I mean, that because yeah. we used to haunt yeah. those places. So what oh, yeah. what about the knives back in those days uh, was so compelling to you when you're surrounded by all that other gear? Well, okay, my pops, he was kind of like a local celebrity somewhat around here he uh he actually caught like one of the you know worst serial killers out there i'm not even going to name it names or anything but he actually was one of the people who caught that and um he ended up becoming an instructor for glock when the police departments around the u.s started transitioning from the revolver into the glock mm -hmm. so he was basically uh one of the people that glock had paid to you know, go to Germany, learn the Glock, and then come over here and teach it to different police departments around the U.S. So it, it, I kind of went with him on a lot of those adventures during the summer. And, uh, yeah, it was just kind of part of my life, you know, and, and it, the knives just came with it. It was like, uh, you know, apples and oranges, I guess, so to speak. So uh, is it the whole, uh, I mean, so this is very interesting. There's a lot right there. Yeah. Um, um, and, and we'll get to the gear in a second, but obviously uh, I want to, I want to uh, linger for a moment on what you said. Your father uh, caught a very famous serial killer and you're not going to name names. And I appreciate that, but yeah. how amazing and interesting is that, 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 uh, that whole story must've been an emotional roller coaster because I know yeah. it takes a lot of work, but you're yeah. thrilled in the end, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing was, it was like kind of by chance how it happened. And uh, they didn't know the guy was a complete psychopath till after they arrested him. And he started admitting to crime after crime after crime. And my dad being the original arresting officer and the one who found out who it was and all that put a name to the face. Uh, he basically had to escort the guy 
all around the U.S. afterwards and basically find all the remains, I guess. I don't want to be too graphic, you know, but I, I understand. It, yeah. So I don't know it, that kind of what, you know, made him a local celebrity, you know, to an extent. And, uh, you know, the fact that he was you know, a veteran and all type of stuff, it, uh, he kind of, uh, he worked for a lot of gov different government agents and stuff like that over the years. And, and, you know, it was just kind of his thing, you know, it, like they say, they don't make them like that anymore. You know, it's a different type of generation, you know, but, uh, yeah, I kind of grew up, you know, under that shadow and, you know, with everything that he would bring home every day. I mean, it was something different every day, whether it was firearms, um, knives, just gear. I was always exposed to that, you know, from a young age. And, and it just, like I said, it stuck, you know, and uh, it's kind of probably overdue that I'm actually designing knives now. But, <laughs> you know, you got to start somewhere, I guess. Well, uh, I mentioned in my uh, open that you loaned me a bunch of boxes uh, uh, a while ago uh, with some amazing um, examples from fixed blade makers. Uh, and, and you sent me other production stuff, but the stuff that really uh, left an impression with me and actually sent me in a different direction with my collecting. I can I can credit this to you. You know, that medium to small sized custom fixed blade is. Yeah. Um, I love carrying them. I carry them on a daily basis. I love using them, and I want to normalize uh, the carry of them. And and you had a huge influence on me in in that. Um, uh, so, with the designs that you're making, and some of the des most of the designs that you sent me, um, they have that self defense, that tactical leaning. Yep. Um, tell me about that approach. Yeah. Um my dad always carried a last ditch knife on him. You know, he would carry a pocket knife, but he would always have something else tucked into his vest, you know? Um, and a lot of times it was just like a little, like a handmade shiv. And, you know, he had uh, a couple of little G10 knives that he had had over the years. And, and, you know, even though that was a thing way back when, you know, it, you know, it's kind of becoming popular again, like, you know, in today, but, uh, He's always carried something like that as a backup and you know even like uh he would carry an ankle piece and stuff like that as well but he always had that backup knife and i guess that was something that kind of stuck with me um he would come home with stuff like that like like i mentioned all the time and and he would just kind of leave it around and i would steal it and, <laughs> and uh he'd probably find it in my uh my uh dresser about two weeks later but um yeah it just I mean, it always stuck with me man and um and that kind of influences a lot of the style that I, I i make because smaller knives are honestly essential in my opinion you know it, it, they're not very um aggressive looking i mean some are of course you know like the pacals but you know something small like uh like the uh Dishonor Blade Chimera. I mean, yeah. you know, it does have an aggressive look, but I mean, you pull this out in front of somebody, they're not going to freak out or anything like that. You know, it's just, I mean, it's a great little knife. And I mean, honestly, I, I, I can't get enough of them. I, every time I see a, uh, somebody making a, a new design like it, I just got to grab it to at least just to try it, you know. Those are beautiful, those little knives. Uh, David was just uh, on the show not too long ago. Um, I, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't know him before blade show. Uh, yeah. so it was nice of you to show off that cool blade, but let's see yeah. the scythe. I, I mentioned right. that up front. This is, this is a booming success and yes. uh, you were nice enough to send me, uh, some prototypes, not only of the, yes. I, I, I want to talk about your whole, your whole DC blades venture, but let's start it off by looking right. at the scythe. This, this is the fixed blade scythe, the original. I can't tell there the no you have it right camera. right there <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah that's, that's the original design it came from a sketch that uh chris from old squirrel knives he actually put a little bit of his uh put a little twist on it i guess so to speak and um yeah we popped out about i don't know about uh five or six of these prototypes and got a lot of people you know messaging us saying hey where can we get one of those and 
you know, it kind of became a thing. So we actually started making them and uh, it, it just, it felt like the right thing to do to make it uh, an actual folding knife, considering there are zero folding pacals under a hundred bucks out mm -hmm. there or haven't been for a really, really long time. I mean, the closest thing you get is like the uh, inversion, which was like $160, I think by Dirk Pinkerton. That was the closest you get to anything budget as far as pacals go. So we wanted to introduce one to market that, you know, people could actually afford and, you know, not have to uh, go without to buy one. So, so yeah. uh, I, I talk about it a lot on the show, but just in case people don't tune into those episodes, uh, yeah. tell us about what Pical, uh, what a Pical style knife is and why uh, your first outing uh, yeah. is a Pical style. All right. Well, honestly, it, it's very, very useful, even though the shape itself might look a little funky, but it, it just, it feels good in the hand. And the fact that it actually goes with your body's natural movements in certain situations, you know, it, it, more defensive than anything, you know, you just trying to back somebody away. I mean, I mean, this will do the trick. You know, the thing about it is it, a lot of fights happen up close and yeah, somebody might swing all crazy on you for a second, but chances are you're going to be wrestling around. And I'd rather have something in my hand I could get a good grip on that, you know, I could defend myself up close if needed. I mean, you have something very long. It's going to be hard to kind of swing yeah. that. And something small and compact like this, just, you know, easy to conceal. You can't get any better than that, in my opinion. I mean, not saying better than the size, but just in general, just yeah. small knives, you know, have more, uh, have more uses than people realize, I think, you know? Yeah, definitely. And for, for the purpose you're talking about self-defense, it's really the only realistic option. Uh, you're yeah. not going to carry a dueling knife with you. You're not going to, yeah. or, or, a, or a combat knife. Chances yeah. are, um, uh, because most of our lifestyles don't allow it, uh, yeah. but they do allow a smaller, uh, fixed blade. Uh, one thing that I really liked about the pro uh, the prototype that you were just holding in your hand with the Sukamaki wrap, which I just yes. find gorgeous. And then also the, uh, the folding version, which I'd love you to show off yes. in a minute here is yes. how the handle gets lost in the fist. It, it makes yes. it very disheart, very hard to disarm. I mean, it you would know, be anyway, because you know, it's a yeah. all knife and all that, but. And, and see that is actually, Let's see, you can probably see it better on this. But the uh, cool. the shape of the actual handle is more like a bamboo kind of bone shape. And this little inward swell right here actually just kind of locks into your hand and it allows, you know, not to be pulled either direction. So it gives you a little bit more control. You know, they've been making knives with bamboo, uh, bamboo handles for years and it's always worked for a reason. So, you know, I figured why not? something like that on the side, you know, especially, you know, considering that it is more of a, um, kind of like a, um, you know, Filipino style knife in general, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're saying by, by the bamboo reference, you're kind of talking about how it's kind of, um, comes into a thin waist and tapers yep. out or, or, um, widens out on both ends. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the folder now this translated, tell me, tell me about yes. taking this design and why, first of all, uh, okay. why you translated it to a folder and then right. what the challenges were. Yeah, I actually, it's on my desk about 10 feet away. <laughs> um, That's all right. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you're not lassoed to your computer, I can talk for 10 seconds while you get it. I'll grab it. And, uh, and just say that uh, the, the the folding version of this scythe was where I really became aware of the fact that the handle is getting lost in the hand, lost in the best way, melting into the hand without a lot of excess coming out. Now, you just saw him with a ringed version and uh, that it's being used as a pommel there. Um, so that's a different case. But when you have something as small as the folder handle or the non ringed fixed blade handle, it gets lost in there and and all the disarms that happen off the pommel in Filipino martial arts, as he's mentioning, uh, you can't do. 
if there's no pommel to be leveraged. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is, tell, tell us about this and working with the OEM. And and also, tell us a little bit, <laughs> I'm, I'm asking you a lot of questions here, but yeah, you mentioned right Old Squirrel, Old yeah. Squirrel Knives. I, on purpose, didn't mention him by name in my intro because I wanted to talk about him and first yeah. find out about how this relationship began and how you discovered that you worked well together creatively. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, he had probably just started maybe his uh instagram not didn't have it up too too long and um you know i i I search hashtags all the time just just looking for gold mines you know and um i just come across one of his posts and um i had uh reached out to him i think it was about it was about one of his tontos and um yeah we got to talking he did an excellent job on it and um and it just shot him an idea i was like hey uh you know, I have this design here. Take a look at it. You know, maybe uh, prototype it for me or something. And he did. And that was the side, the original fixed blade version. And it, it came out perfect. You know, every little detail that he changed that I couldn't see when I was making my initial sketch, it, he caught it. And, you know, it just it just happened. You know, we didn't try for it. it you know, it just kind of fell into place. But it worked out. I mean, the, the thing is the knife came out absolutely perfect. What I wanted it to look like, but couldn't get it there myself. And so we just kind of made a great team on that. So, yeah. And as far as the folding knife goes itself, there really weren't too many challenges as far as trying to get it to close necessarily. Um, a lot of Pacals, you know, you got to have like a curvy handle for it to sit right into the handle whenever mm-hmm. it shuts. But with this, we uh, we didn't want to lose that handle shape. That is something we knew we wanted to keep just because, you know, the arch on the pommel and just how it feels in the hand all around. We, we did not want to lose that shape. And uh, we started playing with it. And, um, yeah, through, uh, through all his expertise on the uh, CADs, he come up with a, with a working version of it. And um, the funny thing is, I was actually shopping for OEMs and um, at the time lefty EDC was working with shielding on the very first growler mm-hmm. and uh, it was the original black micarta growlers and um, whatever happened there um, basically they absolutely killed it on the prototypes for these, which on the original, you see, we, uh, the pocket clips are different. One's just a standard deep carry and the other's the wire clip. But uh, this is, yeah, this was the one we originally got was the, the standard deep carry clip. And when they first arrived, I mean, right out the box, it was absolutely perfect. Action mm-hmm. felt perfect in hand. The size, I mean, they absolutely nailed every aspect of it. And um, basically, they liked it as well. And they, they kind of shared our vision for the knife. So... They took a chance on it, and the rest is history. I mean, it just kind of fell into place. So, uh, when uh, in in this one in particular, um, it I couldn't tell is this under the DC uh, blades shingle or is this no shielding the side? Um, actually, the the folding side itself. We um, we leased all rights to this to okay. shielding, and uh, we collect you know, a royalty right. share of it, but we help promote stuff like that, use our channels through that. And um, yeah, pretty much, like I said, they uh, they took a chance on this yeah. because not many companies really knew what Pacals were, so to speak, at the time. I mean, yeah, they're catching on. You know, certain people know what they are, but not everybody, you know, yeah. and not a lot of people are willing to take a chance on something like this just because of how crazy it looks, you know, it's, it's a crazy idea, but needless to say, they, um, they actually shared our vision and took the chance and, uh, it paid off. So, you know, I'm just glad myself that we're able to put a budget, something that could save somebody's life, something that is small, compact, easy to conceal. It is not over a hundred dollars. These things go for like, 
65 to uh, 67 dollars something like that i believe and it, it might could save your life one day that to me that that's enough i don't need to make any money off this you know it, i'm just happy to have the first budget pacal on the market and yeah, and, and it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it, it seems to me like for uh, a young company such as DC Blades to have your first knife or a knife in the, in the you know, one of your first knives licensed by a company, that's amazing because it gets your name out there. You do get yeah. paid for it in royalties, but yeah. they're assuming all the risk. Yeah. And, uh, and the fact that they made the Bacall knife fly uh, really means that you have a pretty good partnership with them. Yeah, uh, I mean, I cannot complain. You know, they've been really easy to communicate with. Um, and they haven't told me no on anything. Any little detail I said, hey, let, let, let's change this on this one or, you know, let's change this last minute. They, they've been completely up. And, and they trusted our vision as well as, you know, we've trusted them with our vision. So, you know, it it's kind of uh, taken off a little bit. And now, like I said, we've got three other variants coming out before the end of the year, including a titanium version. So yeah. It, uh, Do you have any of those expected. to show? Huh? Do you have no, any of those to show? Not oh. yet. I should, uh, I should have them probably within the next month and I'll be sure to get them to you. All right. So take us, take us there. Uh, you release the scythe and it goes up on where, how did, Tell us how you sold it okay. and uh, and tell us how that all went down. All right. So we got pretty close to where they were uh, coming out of production. You know, they were boxing them up, stuff like that. And um, they hosted it. They have an Amazon account, like a Amazon store. So we put it on there as a pre-sale. And <laughs> I think it took like three minutes and it was wow. they were completely gone. They added, I think, another like 100 units the next morning. And, uh, I think those lasted eight minutes. And then, um, yeah, we also sent a certain amount to white mountain knives. They just lasted a couple hours over there. I mean, it, you know, it's been really humbling, you know, I, you know, considering that we, you know, our main goal was to put something in somebody's pocket that might be able to save their lives. You know, we're not making a killing off these at all whatsoever. And we don't want to, you know, this, this is, this is more basically a gift from us to the community, if you want to call it that, you know, and it's just more of a thank you, I guess, so to speak. But um, yeah, the, uh, the first two pre-sales went out in less than 10 minutes total, I think something like that. And the, uh, I think the other one lasted about 30 minutes, but there was more on that one. But yeah, other than that, they've just, <laughs> it's kind of surprises how good they they have been selling to be honest but well you, know. you you say it's a it's a thank you sorry to interrupt you but you say it's a thank you to the knife community but i bet there are a lot in the knife community who want to thank you because and that was totally corny but the reason yeah. i say that is because a lot of people want to support people they like such as yourself yeah. you're you're not only dc blades you're tier one gear and edc reviews yeah. from youtube people know you people like you People want to support you, but it's not always easy uh, when when guys like us design knives. Sometimes they come out real expensive because we love the yep. fancy materials, and then you can't support that that guy. Yep. So, um, I, I think I think it's really a, a, a great goal to put an awesome Pical style knife in people's hands. But I also think it's it, it has this nice side effect: the fact that you kept it within reach, that everyone gets to to have one, pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, that was our main goal. You know, we wanted everybody to be able, even the people that don't even like Pacals, they just see it, think it looks funny and you know, want to try it. You know, you know, that's, that's the reason for the price. We really want more people to try this out and just see how useful the actual Pacal is for an everyday carry. I mean, it's, it's still a sharp edge, you know, you can't, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't deny that. So you mentioned yeah. the uh, you mentioned Pinkerton's inversion earlier, and uh, and 
that knife is the first, uh, you know, I have the uh, Emerson Elvia, love that knife. I have a bunch yes. of calls, you know, uh, but the inversion was the first one where I was like, oh, this really does make a great EDC. Uh, yes. If you just, if you just hold it the way you hold a regular knife, you know, that yes. curve takes care of everything, puts the point mm -hmm. where you need it. Yep. Um, yep. And it, but then you can use it, uh, you know, for, for other other reasons now uh have you gotten any feedback on any owners of the scythe as to how it's fit into their edc or or if they're it's, you know if they've saved lot if, if it's come in handy in any way no no crazy uh stories yet about it Good. saving anybody's life but you know i have gotten a lot of videos and you know a lot of people share their reels that they make you know just cutting random stuff i mean i appreciate that i, I enjoy the feedback that's that's really what i you know that's why i do it you know and that's why i started my channel you know i i actually hate social media i really do i'm not gonna lie i hate social media but the thing is the selling knives for as long as i did you know with the shop and everything you know being able to help somebody choose the right knife for them it's kind of one of my favorite things, honestly, you know, somebody goes to ask me a question in the comments. Hey, you know, what do you think about this knife compared to this? You know, I actually enjoy telling them, well, hey, you know, what do you do? What do you do for a living? Do you, you know, just find out certain little things. And that's how I would sell stuff at the counter of my store, you know, just find out, you know, what they do for a living, you know, just little things about them. And then I would help them choose their knife same things just what 30 years later and the um the fact that i'm still helping people is is all i ask for you know it's just i i, I guess i it might be corny to say that i guess that's the type of person i am but i i enjoy i enjoy helping other people you know and even though i don't know everything i am not a knife expert by any means but I have a lot of experience with knives and if that I can help somebody, you know, in their decision, buying a new knife, then yeah, I'm, I'm completely happy. You know, we all like to be useful. We all like to be, uh, and I know, I know exactly where you're coming from and, and I might even be the one to start the conversation. You need a pocket knife. Let's figure out which pocket knife. Yeah. Uh, glad you asked. Yeah. Um, I've always yes. been like that for some reason. It's just, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, especially, you know, if that knife saved their life or helped them in a certain situation, it's a good feeling. Yeah. And, and no doubt uh, the longer DC blades um, exists and starts yeah. turning out more and more knives, the more you're going to hear about that, the longer your, yeah. your stuff is out in the world. I mean, I think that's a, uh, a yeah. very interesting aspect of of what you're doing and what other people yeah. do in making knives. Those things have a life once they leave your your nest. Yep, yep. And you know, I say that all the time. You know, it, can you imagine where this will be a hundred years from now? I mean, it, it's it's kind of weird to think about. You know, this is going to be in somebody's drawer or somebody's toolbox or hopefully on somebody's hip you know it's gonna be years. in a lot better shape than you my friend yeah yeah exactly these things all of them will probably outlive me and but but uh and that's where i see the value in a lot of it honestly is you know you see something like this this is the uh i absolutely love this oh this yeah. is the auxiliary, auxiliary yeah yeah the auxiliary manufacturing wild card absolutely love this knife about 250 bucks, which might be expensive for some people, but this thing's gonna last me a lifetime. I mean, yeah. you, made, you made by hand by Michael Jarvis, you know, made by hand 200 bucks. Yeah. That's you know, we 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 buy that if we spend that on a spider co, that's you know, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, like you said, that thing's gonna outlive me so. Um, not to talk about another knife maker, but the auxiliary <laughs> manufacturing is, I love that stuff. He's, yes. he's, he's making some really, um, cool stuff. Um, 100%. but so is, um, so is old squirrel. And actually yes. before you and he, you and old squirrel linked up, his name is Chris, yep. um, uh, Chris Harrison, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, before the two of you hooked up, you know, I've been following him for a while 
And um, and then when I realized that he's the one who made the scythe when you sent it to me, that was a cool little bit of uh, I don't know. It was cool to see those two things oh, yeah. come together. Um, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit. I, I want to talk about the new design. But before we get there, I want to ask you a little bit about your collection. I mean, as I mentioned yeah. before, you've loaned things to me, but I have a feeling uh, your collection is sprawling. Uh, what are the yeah. what are the types of things that uh, besides you know well, what are the types of things you like to collect? Honestly, I, I'm obsessed with fixed blades. Um, just like you said, I, I try and buy one from every new maker. If I find a new maker and I don't have something from them, I at least try and get something in in my collection from them. Just not in not just supporting them as makers, but you know I really like to try everything you know i i I guess i'm I'm never satisfied with one particular knife and you know even if it's my own i'm i'm not going to be satisfied with it it's just uh, i'm always on the search for something new and the fact that instagram actually uh kind of how do you say um encourages that (laughs) it's hard to uh look on instagram without wanting to spend money these days but yeah, I mean, there's just so many makers out there. Little fixed blades is my thing. I just can't get enough of them. Yeah, uh, Instagram is like the arch enabler, you know. Yeah. Um, I have uh, 35 seconds to kill here at work while this thing uploads. Let me take a look at what I can spend my money on. Oh, here's a new yep. maker, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but obviously, you saw a need for the scythe uh, folder, and now you're working on a new folder. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, I've always had a thing for clip points, you know, Bowie's in general, but this Ooh. is the Cito. And uh, I wasn't sure a week ago if I was even going to name it that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is actually, you might be able to see this one better. Okay. This is the sat one. Cito, what does that mean? Yep. It is a uh, goddess. It is a Greek goddess of the ocean. It's basically like daughter of Gaia. So, uh, yeah, it's the name of a Greek goddess, basically. Nice. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it's funny. Nick um, Stasa actually mm-hmm. mentioned the other day how this kind of looked like the JK. Like, if you look the... Uh, Okay, it is a clip point, of course, but our inlays on the new Jade Cape and this are identical almost. Oh. And that was completely by chance. Like whenever I seen the new uh, Jade Cape come out, I about died and, and scrapped this whole project entirely. But we ran with it. And um, yeah, uh, I, it's kind of uh, hard to see in my camera. Uh, I don't know about, no, I, we can see, we got a great view of it if you hold it like okay, that. I don't, I don't see, I mean... It bears a resemblance to the um, J Cape in that it's a clip point and yeah. it's a um, frame lock and and oh and that it's compound ground. But other than that, yeah. you know, uh, I never would have put that together. But I'm not yeah. familiar with the new inlay on the J Cape. You know, he mentioned it. I, I honestly I can't unsee it now, <laughs> even <laughs> it is even though it is my own design. But here's the thing: I actually modeled this after the Birch Tree Blade Works Sakan. The, just the size and the specs. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love the size of that yeah. knife. You know, it, one of my favorite knives. And um, we just basically took the specs and uh, made our own handle and all that. Um, basically, on the Sakan, the uh, the handle separates your. Uh, it basically separates your four fingers. Basically, two up front here towards the uh, front choil, and then to basically kind of hang off at an angle. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to kind of replicate that without stealing it, of course. So we actually kind of separated the fingers a little bit more and kind of uh, made it more like a three finger knife. But this little edge right here, your your pinky actually kind of falls right off it and kind of feels like a bigger knife in hand. Um, we really took a risk with this handle shape by doing so. But it came out absolutely perfect. I couldn't ask for a better size. I mean, it feels pretty good in the hands, especially 
you know, I, I don't have big, big hands, but I have long hands and the, the width of the knife and just everything came together really nicely. The, the way you're describing or not describing, but the way, uh, the, the, the pinky area looks, it looks very comfortable. It also looks yes. like, uh, sometimes like almost like, um, uh, it doesn't look anything like a Yojimbo handle, but you know how a Yojimbo handle tapers towards the end and you get that yep. feeling that it's locked between your, your, your pinky and your forefinger. That's what it yep. looks like. You get the same effect there. Yep. And I got to say, I applaud the, um, not doing two two and two finger partitions the spock thing that yeah. drives that does drive me nuts there are a couple of knives that i have that um yeah. i've gotten used to it like the emerson Sachs, but uh yeah. like the um the benchmade contigo i just could never get used to that oh yeah yeah you know some drive me absolutely insane you know and we actually have i guess i can go ahead and say this we have a design that is uh fixing to be released with tops. They are working oh, on it right yes. now. Yeah. And Sorry. it is called the Medusa. And we actually have that handle on the design. We haven't got to prototype it. I actually sent them, we were working on something else with them and I sent them the design and they were like, Oh yeah, well we got to do this one too. So, <laughs> so we're trying to prototype it right now and get everything ironed out. And uh, it, it basically is the same kind of, handle thing but it, where it splits in the center but um chris had actually ordered a few um actually ordered a few billets and uh we'd had them made and uh had them uh i can't even think right now the um water jet they had a oh, water okay. jet and uh yeah and, and it came out just a little bit low so we've been kind of uh trying to adjust it and bef before we send it back to tops. But um, the thing is, if we can get it right, I think it's going to be a pretty good little project. Tops, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, you know, I, you know, I love tops knives and yeah. And it's exciting knowing your taste and also knowing that you're working with tops. Uh, I don't know what yeah. it is, but it sounds good. And I'm a huge, uh, I love, you know, uh, Medusa and, and uh, yeah. The, yeah. the Greek, my daughter, my, my older daughter tells me all the stories. She's read them all. Yeah. They're cool. So Medusa, <laughs> great name for it. That's exciting. I'm, 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 I'm happy to hear that. Uh, working with tops. So you're working with an American company, uh, couldn't yes. get more American than tops. And then working no. with, with, uh, Chinese OEMs, uh, it's for, that's a, a kind of an interesting spread there. I don't talk to too many people who are, who are doing both simultaneously. Uh, yeah. any, any, uh, anything you've noticed? Well, I mean, we're still in the early stages with tops. Um, it, it basically came into fruition after Blade Show, mm -hmm. and um, it, everything's just starting to come together. Um, I believe we're supposed to be unveiling the Medusa or maybe the other project. I'm not sure at Shot Show in January. Oh, cool. I'm not a hundred percent on it, but that's what I'm told as of now. Um, I think they're uh, going to be having their meetings, their yearly meetings in the next month, and then I'll know everything by then. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of humbling, honestly, because me, I, I absolutely love tops. You know, mm. uh, to me, as far as a fixed blade designer goes, that's that's always been like the epitome, you know, for me. Yes. You know, just it's tops. I mean, they, they make some of the best knives in the world that are, you know, in probably some of the worst locations in the world, you know, just, you know, actually, you know, saving people's lives. So it's good to know that my knife is going to be right there with all those, you know, it's actually you, really humbling. It, it, yeah, I bet. I mean, I would, I can imagine because I feel the same way about tops and like for a long time, they were that unattainable, like amazing military yep. combat knife uh, that yeah. one day i was gonna get um right. is working with tops um do you think is it a faulty assumption uh to think that working with tops is a much more immediate process because they're right here um or is it just business is business and whether they're in yeah. china or in idaho or utah um it's just business as usual man it's just business as usual um we actually are trying to count I think, I, yeah, we are 
working with six manufacturers right now total. Wow. Chris. Yeah, all all at some you know, all at various stages with different projects. So yeah, I, I've kind of got a uh, taste of everything here lately. You know, late night emails. I think I'm up till probably three, four in the morning every night just answering emails. It's just, you know, the uh, time difference and all yeah. that is it's it's kind of a pain in the ass whenever you uh, have to answer an email and wait, you know, till the next day to respond. Or, you know, so yeah. I, most of my business has been done at night recently. So, uh, yeah, but it's been really interesting. You know, it's different. So the CETO, that is, so that is not being made by Shielden, right? Who's no. making that? Migron. Yep. They make a nice knife. I mean, so does Shielden, but but we yeah. know Mig Migron as a as yeah. a, they kind of uh, introduced themselves in a in a sort of higher echelon. Yes, yes, they. Uh, I call them the budget riot. That's what I call them. And you know, the funny part is, it's the same material. So, what does that tell you? You know, but uh, honestly, it's been really great working with Migron as well. They uh, Sam, he. Uh, he uh he has a knack for for knife making and um you know it's a little bit of a language barrier there but everything seems to have gone very very smooth and you know this isn't the only one this is one of three projects that we are working on with them right now as well should have prototypes on the other two within the next month or two should be right behind each other as well um but yeah, uh, it, it's actually been really great working with him. And uh, just the fact that uh, he, he's really hands on, you know, every little aspect, sending me pictures saying, hey, you know, what do you think about this? What, you know, should we do this? You know, should we change this? And I appreciate that because I'm OCD to begin with. So, you know, I'm constantly wanting updates and it just it kind of worked out. Well, so that's what it's like working with OEM. That's business. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm sure it's, uh, it, it can have its frustrations and that kind of thing, but business is business. But, yeah. but what I'm curious about now is the design side, because, uh, you know, you, you form a French, you, you form a partnership or a friendship, presumably with someone, uh, you know, old squirrel, uh, Chris, and, but, but you're also co-designing and that's very, personal i would imagine what is that yeah. process like um well you know the thing is is we just kind of kick off each other's ideas um you know we we kind of come up with you know what style we, we think you know would be good for you know the current climate you know should i say mm -hmm. um current buyer's climate um you know which with our percal, with uh, our scythe, you know, it, it was just overdue. It, it was time, you know. It, I think uh, I've seen maybe, what, two or three other percals come out right around the same time, both folders, and we were like, look, these things are starting to pick up steam. Let's do it. And that's kind of where we're at as far as our other designs go. We're like, okay, we want to do a tanto. We want to do a uh, sheep's foot. We want to do a worn clip. So, you know, I kind of pitch a few ideas to him. You know, he does the CAD work and stuff like that, which he's really good at. You know, of course, he's the machinist, so um, he does most of that work. But, uh, yeah, a, a lot of the ideas, I guess, are mine, and then he kind of makes them come to life. So it's just, yeah, it's a really good, uh, really good thing we got going so far. You know, it just occurred to me um... – uh, well, first of all, uh, yeah, there's nothing like a creative, uh, a successful creative partnership um, yeah. to to bring out to bring out the best in in people and and get them to grow. Um, but it, it makes me, um, I think it's pretty cool, or it, it was a good idea to bring out a pacal, uh, folding pacal at that at that um, attainable price. Not only because there was yeah. a a, a, um, a uh, a space in the market for it, but yeah. because it is a strange blade shape, people might be curious, 
but yeah. not willing to spend 250 bucks exactly. uh, to get behind exactly. the wheel of a Pakal. So this is a way to dabble and, and, and to see. And that could be the one and only they ever get. But damn, is it a unique, cool, and useful knife. And then, heaven forbid, deadly if you need it to be. Yeah. Yeah. It is that. It is that. You know, I actually, uh, I think it was about six years ago, I think, when I first sketched the scythe out. You know, it was pretty much, like I said, Chris, he, he uh, basically redesigned the whole entire handle. And... Uh, you know, but the blade I had originally done as a double edge, and um, basically, we knew we weren't going to get a double edge into a folder, not without mm -hmm. having the handle twice as big, and we just, it wouldn't have the same blade shape. It wouldn't be the side. It would have to be a completely different model, but uh, basically, we, uh, we knew we wanted to, at, at least, if not maybe OEM them if we did not get a deal with like shielding or something, but it, the way it kind of worked out with shielding is they were looking to basically, um, how do I say it? they're trying to reinvent shielding the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their manufacturer, they manufacture all types of stuff, but they were basically wanting to focus more on EDC related items. So we kind of just uh, right place, right time. And, uh, yeah, basically, we weren't even expecting to get this started as soon as we did. So, uh, but it, the way it all worked out, it, it, I can't complain. It's so, do you do you mean crazy. like um, do you mean like Shielden was uh, looking to rebrand Shielden? Yeah. Wait, wait, does Shielden they make a bunch of stuff outside of knives? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes, they'd make like multi tools and phone cases and stuff like that. And they really wanted to uh, shift focus more to, you know, EDC related stuff. So, uh, like I said, it was kind of a right place, right time. Sure. And, um, and maybe they yeah. were also looking for some collaboration because that gives them yes. some clout too. Look at what we're doing yes. with these guys over here. Yep. And, you know, they've got what Jerry Jell uh, Jelly Jerry. I don't, I don't know how I always say that backwards. Right. <laughs> uh, Dirk Pinkerton. Got a couple mm -hmm. knives together with them. Um, I think like five or six other, you know, well-known designers that they picked up to help them relaunch the brand. So, I mean, they, they definitely, uh, you know, found the right strategy, so to speak. But um, I actually, uh, Dirk Pinkerton and me and Chris, DC Blades, were actually having um, another release Think, did I send you the? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I sent you the image earlier. I don't know you, if it went you, through. You sent me uh, uh, four images. Two of them were the Cito, but uh, there were there was a folding Pakal, and then yes. there was a uh, of a, uh, a, a a waved um, sort of uh, um, yes. uh, scimitar yes. kind of. Okay, the Pakal that is a collaboration with Dirk Pinkerton, and oh, right prototypes should be here probably about a month, if that. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, Justin, uh, from, uh, you know, he's, he's one of my all time favorites. As yes. a matter of fact, uh, I just happened to have this right in front of me. I loved his work. And, uh, and this is a, this, you, him and Chris, that sounds like a, a, a match, a, 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 what do they call a thruple made in heaven, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. pretty, that's, that's a pretty uh, forceful uh, group there. Yeah. And we're actually making them, the protos in the same style as we did the Cetos, the uh, the black satin. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that's what we're, we're going to offer for the actual production run. You know, we're probably going to have a few different options. But the prototypes will be in black and uh, satin like this. And um, like I said, we should have them within a month. And, uh, of course, I'll make sure it come straight to you whenever they arrive but um i'm really looking forward to that one that's that one that's i've told a few people that that's probably going to be my magnum opus right there i'm i'm pretty proud of that one well magnum opus uh sort of um implies that you're done after that uh, oh. because it can't get any better so i i would say that yeah. that is the the first of a of a line of masterpieces that's what you should call it Dude, I, I tell you what, if I can beat it, 
I will surprise myself because <laughs> I think it's it's going to be pretty special. You it know, is beautiful, and I I uh, we have I, I I I'm pretty sure we might have that image. Is that something you'd be willing to show off or? Yeah. Okay, if if uh, if Jim has it, I'm pretty sure I may have sent it to him, but it, it was a long day. So if he has it, uh, the folding pical will will float it up on screen. It is beautiful. It looks very cool. The handle yes. is 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 uh, notably different from the scythe handle. Yep. They have the same purpose: self defense folding pical style knife. But this uh, this one that that uh, is in prototyping right now has a more contoured, more full-handed handle it looks like inversion uh, like the inversion oh, I yeah love the, i love it's, the inversion. Uh, i used aspects from the inversion when okay. putting it together and um like basically uh you know i do a little bit send it the dirt see what he thought chris and that's what we landed on and uh you know you, you can really see the inversion handle in it but then you know we have the uh the the actual thumb rest on the palm. Yes, and everything. yes. And, I yeah, love the and, thumb rest. And we actually place the clip. It's going to be. A, it's not going to be a deep carry clip. It's just going to be a standard pocket clip. And it's going to sit actually high enough out the pocket to where you should be able to clip that pummel with your finger and with deploy finger. the knife right Sweet. into the reverse grip. So Sweet. I, we can get carried away with deep carry clips, man. Yeah. You know, to the yeah. point where it's like. You're not hiding anything. People can still see the damn clip. Uh, yep. It doesn't need to be down in my pocket. And when it's yep. so far, and I mean, I like a deep carry clip as much as the next guy, but yep. if it's too deep in there, you're pinching it. It's staying. It's staying yep. in your pocket. Yep. Um, anyway, I don't. I don't it's like the Cito. You know, we thought about deep carry clip on it, and I was yeah. like, Nah, let's. But nah, it's just yeah. too much to try and dig out your pocket. Well, no, no, no. Then a year later, or six years, six months later, then you come out with the deep carry pocket clip, and then and then you know make people buy those too. There you go. There you go. That's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> oh man, I like it. So so this is exciting. So you got six uh, six designs currently in the works in various stages of development. No. Okay, so when There's I was in a the lot more than six. There's six oh. different manufacturers. <laughs> Oh, six different manufacturers working on yeah. more than more than six knives. So, yeah. okay, well, Pretty let crazy. me ask you this, and and hopefully this isn't too personal a question, but when you're working on that many designs, is it is it uh, assumed that some of them are are licensed and some of them you're paying for, or yes, or do you yes. pay for? Okay, yes, we're OEM and the uh, the stuff with Megron, um, all the Megron stuff's going to be OEM and. Uh, yeah, we the other ones we're doing royalty deals. So we have probably close to ten projects that will be royalty deals and six that are OEM. So Oh man. Yeah. You yeah. guys are so, on fire. Well, we're coming out swinging, man. That's the only way to, you know. Agreed, agreed. Uh uh Bob Terza will uh uh talked about that um, when he was on the show as mailbox money you yeah. know the, the the royalties you you design you know yep. there, there there are some things that you uh put everything into and then there are some yep. things that you design and you put your your artistic all into but then you let them fly the coop and they live their own life yep. uh with yep. Miguron or, or whomever yep. and and, and the, the the great part about it is brands like tops you know if if that knife's popular it's probably going to sell for the next 10 years you know it's yeah. however long they decide they want to make it you know yeah yeah so. yeah especially with a place like tops that maintains yeah. such a huge uh inventory of active designs yeah you know and and uh it seems like with your usage first of all uh with the you know with the sort of um bend towards the self-defense but yeah. also with the love of edc and medium size fixed blade knives i mean tops has a huge catalog of those and yeah. that's one of the reasons i love them you know is because you can always get your fix on that side yeah 100 percent. have you tried the new msk folder i have not uh i have no i haven't i like that it's a clip it's point not, now yes uh, it's nicer it's is a it? Lot nicer. Yes, I love is it. Is it actually. still made in Italy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And six ninety co. Yeah. It, it um, 
I tell you what, I had uh, I bought it probably, I don't know, about a month ago. And it's been one of my most carried since. And not just because I like tops, you know, it's just, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, the Ocaso standard. You know, it, it's just a, a really good neutral design. You know, mm-hmm. it's a knife. It's not, you know, it's not super flashy with the design. It's, it's a sharp edge, comfortable handle. And I mean, what, what, what more could you really ask for? Honestly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've got, uh, I guess over, t- I guess we'll call it close to 16, maybe projects yes. in various, uh, various states of development, stages of development, yeah. they say in the film industry, but, yeah. but as, as time goes on and DC blades goes on, what do you see as your um, ultimate knife from from your perspective right now? What is that thing down the road you would love to be responsible for designing and building? Honestly, I would like to do, and yeah, it, it might uh, might sound corny, but an OTF Picol. That doesn't not sound corny. Not, yeah, not just a standard OTF Bacall, but something that can deploy straight from the reverse grip. I'm, I'm really big on that. I'm, you know, the uh, Dagger Knives OTF Mermaid. Mm. Did you ever get to see that? Uh, only in videos. I didn't see it in real life. It has two buttons. One, yeah. when you hold the knife like this, yep. flip it up, then it's got one down here. I absolutely love that. And if I can ever incorporate that into a Pacal, then 100% I will. I don't know anything about designing OTFs at this point. Yes. But if I ever can, I will. That sounds amazing. That that sounds like an amazing challenge uh, for a lot yeah. of reasons. One yeah. of them, one of them being, and, and, and this is something that you see on the site that I really love is the weird angle from the handle. And yep. that's to accommodate, you know, a back fist or a hammer fist. And it puts that point where you need it to be without. Um, yep. So so how you would get that in a um, in an OTF, you know, that 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 is the big yep. challenge, because presumably the handle goes one way, the blade goes another or. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. But but you might you might see some. Um, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you, Justin. Okay. But, Go ahead. But in the in the in the Pakal you were holding up before by auxiliary that that does something interesting where it's kind of straight but also kind of does that curve thing. So, mm-hmm. so there there are design solutions out there to those who want them. Yeah, and you know I have a couple things sketched out. I have a couple things sketched out that are kind of similar to this. You know I, I definitely don't want to bite off his style or anything, sure. but. You know, they do have a straight spine like this and, uh, you know, inwards edge. But I really want something a little more curvy. I really want to uh, I really want to make that challenge worth it, actually. Well, we look forward to, to seeing you crack that code. Um, OK, so let me ask you about DC Blades then. So we know yeah. what you your 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 dream build is an out the front pick call. What about DC blades? How do you want to see DC blades evolve over time? Man, honestly, just still running would be perfectly happy to me. Just <laughs> us being able to, <laughs> yeah. just us being able to, you know, I don't, man, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, uh, one of those people that are really money hungry, so to speak. I, you know, <laughs> I can get by me on the absolute bare minimum. So it, as long as we're actually, you know, providing for our families from it and putting good knives in people's pockets, that's, that's, I'm happy with that, man. Yep. I, I love that. I love the idea of making a tool, putting it out in the world and, um, yeah. you know, knowing the good that that will be done from it justin thank you so much i really appreciate your coming on the knife junkie podcast and like we said before uh it's been a long time coming and it's been a real pleasure yeah dude i appreciate you having me on it's my pleasure take care sir
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Carvin of Tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews, but even more so, DC Blades. Uh, I know that the scythe, uh, folding scythe, was was a huge hit, sold out, uh, as he mentioned, really quickly, but uh, have it on good word, there are more in the works. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for scythes in the future, including those uh, made with premium materials. All right, be sure to join us again next Sunday for another great interview, as well as Wednesday. Uh, for the midweek supplemental and Thursday for Thursday Night Knives right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.